Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormy and today we are playing some Starters Order 6. And uh, yeah, in this video we are rounding off the first race um, of the season. Well, we rounded that off in the last video, so this is a chance to look now at correcting a few mistakes, two mistakes. One of which was Dangerous Minds, who came in second place in their race. Good young sort of uh, horse with potential and just didn't work out for them. So, wow, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We just put him... Like yesterday I booked these races. We've gone forward like three or four days at most in game and... Yeah, the race I've booked for Dangerous Minds is now all just completely wrong. Look at that, He's he needs a mile. He does need a mile, so I went to the six furlong. I misbooked the race anyway, but yeah, that that's that's a mile. It's a dangerous mines. I mean, not really sure why these are appearing there. But there's nothing for dangerous mines. So we might as well just go through to the next race with green peaches. Let's go to the auction and see if anything spectacular stands out. Nope, no group one winners, so we just move on. Green Peaches, six furlongs. Yes, indeed. That'll be a grade three race for Green Peaches. And a little bit of potential to fill out. Some good bars. We want to see what she can do. Nice little laid back filly. That's always a good thing for the breeding line. Sweet Treats didn't really run well enough in the first race of the season. Four year old. Came in third in a grade two. So. We're down to an allowance race to try and see if we can't get a little bit of form and just see if this horse is genuine or not. Is it worth persevering with as a four-year-old or not? That's the big question there. Third in this first race, we need a big improvement. Trader Vic, good little horse here, wins its opening race. And uh, again, that's another grade three, so we're just testing a little bit. And Wild Retriever... That is a one mile, one furlong race, which might be okay. I'm hoping that'll be okay. Beginning to tire a little bit, but we're going to go for a grade three there. I don't think there was a mile race for Wild Retriever. We can actually check and just make sure that there wasn't anything fun over a mile, and there is. Ooh. Okay, why did I book it in to mile three, uh, a mile one, if there was a mile race? I'm not sure. See how Boyle Retriever has won grade two before. So, yeah, let's stick to a mile, let's stick to a mile. Let's stick to a mile. So, we've got the Gotham there. And you know what? We'd be competitive there. We might be top weight, though. We are. Well, I'm not sure about that. What if we went for the grade two? Again, we'd be top weight in a tough field. Against a nice horse in Primo Hidden, it looks like. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's test Wild. Let's, let's test. Do we want... Uh, yeah, go on, let's test it. Let's test it. Um, so, Green Peaches. I do tend to second-guess myself, thinking how hard I should push these horses sometimes. Peaches should come out here with a win. A little bit laid back. Trouble Beauty has blown up a little bit. Personal Legend had a bad first run. The other three have yet to race. So we are favourite. And, um, yeah, I'd be very, very surprised if we did not 
get a win here and get a grade three win. So that's kind of what we're hoping for. Let's see how this one works out. Green Peaches is here on the inside. Not a bad start and sort of charges out towards the front. Tribal Beauty on the outside and Intransient just behind us in the third place. Lindsay's Wish making a run now in fourth, trying to close that gap a little bit, not to get left behind. Personal Legend and Social Saul are at the rear of the field. We are on the shoulder of Tribal Beauty now, four furlongs, just edging a nose into the lead. Lindsay's Wish just ahead of Tribal uh, of Intransient, who's coming back round the outside now. Getting into position, Tribal Beauty still holds second, but will get past just by a nose, by a head now, two and a half furlongs left to run in this race. Personal Legend making a run from the back. No sign of social soul at all, but inside two, we power out and start making that gap bigger. One and a half furlongs, no challengers inside. Green Peaches, nice and easily coasting round now. The final furlong as we finish the turn, half a furlong down the straight, pushing clear even more intransient, not going to come anywhere close enough to challenge. And Green Peaches takes that race by quite some distance, as expected. So that there is a grade three win on Peaches. Nice and easy, good way to get a good rating just by booking your horses in races they should win and especially graded races you can start stepping up the difficulty by hand picking which race they go in so an easy run for green peaches as we booked next up is wild retriever and this is not going to be an easy race by any stretch of the imagination this is going to be probably the toughest race any of the horses have um, yeah, like, this will be the toughest race to date this season. Wild Retriever steps back up to the plate at grade 2 level, over a mile, will be joint top weight with a very, very good horse. So, a lot of races beforehand, where are we? There we are. So we're nowhere near the front runners in the betting here. We've got a good record. We have got a good record. One blemish there. Primo Hidden gets an eighth place in a race. When's that? Like a few days ago. A few days ago. So just a week ago, Primo Hidden finishes eighth in a race. Our little dreamer does pick up a win and will take over the betting lead because of it. Bonashinda does decent there as well Kim Gettigan nice little record so not a bad field at all I think that uh, our little dreamer of course is a danger and as well as that Primo Hidden is the other danger so we'll have a look at the tipsters here our little dreamer is the horse to worry about well, let's go to Gulfstream and see what we can do here then. This is the big test of the video. Can we get a win on Wild Retriever here over a mile? It's a good start. It's a very good start. Bowman Shinda and Dream now, not a great start from them. Primo Hidden goes out to the front, overtaken now by our little Dreamer. Dream now into third, King Gettigan fourth, Haman is in fifth. We're in sixth. Just behind us, loves me, loves me not, Peeping Tom and Bo Nashinda at the rear of the field. We're moving up the inside of Hamam here. Six furlongs to run. Our little dreamer's got a few lengths lead at the front, and then it's fairly close between Dream Now, Primo Hidden, and King Gettigan. We're moving up to join those. On the other side, loves me not is up above Haman. Bonashinda's coming up the inside, trying to get into the race. We're in decent position so far. Four furlongs to run. Looks like Primo Hidden now is going to start moving up, trying to get up into challenging positions right on the heel of our little dreamer. Three and a half furlongs. 
I'd like to see Wild Retriever make a move here. And we do go to the outside. We're not really gaining any ground. It's down to the inside. Back to the outside. Primo looks to be in good positions here. Two furlongs from the end. Our little dreamer, though, is going to kick on and start powering for home. Wild Retrievers left themselves so much to do here. One furlong left to run. And we've got all the running in us. But do we have enough to chase down our little dreamer towards the line? It's going to be close to one and just by a length, World Retriever steps up and actually manages to get the grade two win in pretty decent company. That is pretty decent company. I felt that we didn't ride very well there. I think that we were in bad position a couple of times, bad position early. Bad position over about three to four furlongs out. Didn't think we made the right moves at the right time. But the horse carries us through and absolutely storms home. Chasing down a pretty decent lead as well. And uh, Wild Retriever will take that race. I'm very happy to see that. So half a length, just over half a length, nearly three quarters from our little dreamer. Primo hidden up into third I'm, yeah, I'm very pleased to see that. And that's a 115 rating, though, for World Retriever. As a three-year-old, getting up now, it's second grade two win. That is pretty fantastic. Sweet Treats is up next. A chance to redeem after a poor opening race to the season. A third place finish in his first race as a four-year-old. And uh, we will start as favourite. We are top weight as well as top rated and favourite. We are the best record in this field. Monte Cassino is a decent horse. Didn't run out well the last time. Divine View places a lot, so that could be a little bit of a danger there. But ultimately, we should be by far the favourite for this race, and we are. However, it is worth noting... That the difference between 9 stone 9 pounds and 10 stone 1 pounds is 6 pounds. That is a lot of extra weight to carry against this field. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do too much with that extra weight. Even next Picasso is a little bit uh, agitated. Everything else seems to be okay, but it's between us and Divine View according to the tipsters, according to the betting. And I'll accept that fact. It is a night race here. So this is the Maxim Gold Cup allowance race. One mile, one furlong here. Four-year-olds and above in the dirt. You can see Divine View there in that pink silk. We are in the white with the black star. Our usual silks, of course. And it's a good start by us. It's a good start indeed. Divine View right at the back of the field. Not getting off to a great start at all. And we have got eight furlongs left to run as we set now behind the front runners alongside Sierra Cat. In front of us is Monte Cassino, Noir Avert, Unix Picasso and Everwatt is in the lead. Once upon a time leads out Divine View and Confront there at the back of the field. Six and a half furlongs. We're in good position but we need to start making a little bit more headway I believe. Over the next two to three furlongs, we need to be up near that second position spot. I'd like to be right on the heels of the leader going into the third furlong from home. Looks like once upon a time, it's starting to make up a little bit of ground on us. And we're starting to bridge the gap now back to second through fourth. We move to the outside, four furlongs left to run. And here we go, starting powering round the outside. And we get ourselves up into that fighting position just before the three furlong marker. So that's what we want to see. Everwatt looks like they're trying to push out a little bit here. We'll see Sweet Treats now as we round this turn, start making their move. It looks like Once Upon a Time and uh, Divine View are kind of out of it at the moment. We have jumped into the lead here. One and a half furlongs, down to one furlong from home. Noir Avert looks to try and make a little bit of a run, 
Monte Cassino getting up into the mix of things. Divine View, very, very disappointing at the rear of the field, but Sweet Treats will sweep on towards victory past the finishing post in some comfort. So only an allowance race, nothing really to brag about, but it's a good win for Sweet Treats. And we should start looking again at the Grade 1 races, I believe. So second place in a Grade 2. But we have won the grade ones last season so we need to figure out can we get back there it's nice to see that we can beat a lesser field even with an extra weight on top of us and i mean what was that three and three quarter lengths that was quite a decent run so last race for the video is going to be trader vic in that next grade three over six furlongs we're going to skip that auction there hasn't been too much in this save at all, so there's not much point in uh, in watching the auctions too heavily. There's a two, a grade two, but I mean, eh, not the best of records, but a one in three strike rate, which isn't all that impressive. Kind of need to see a little bit more. So, auction the day before racing. And there's absolutely nothing again. So, we're going to go into the final race then. Trader Vic jump straight in here and see where we stand against this field. So, there we go. We are favourites. Wither City has won their opening race. Time of War came in second. And the rest are unraced. You can see, though... With the city is slightly agitated. It looks like Classic Mike is sweating badly, so that's probably them out of the race. They are under blinkers. Tradevic is the heavy favourite. The outsider, excuse me, goes for time of war as the outsider. That's not a bad shout. Maybe able to finish up in first, second, or third with a bit of luck. But uh, with the city's definitely the horse I really want to keep an eye on. So the purple sleeves are the horse which I think might challenge us a little bit. Not a lot, however. So here on the outside is Time of War. We're well on the inside. Running quite well. Glingamil is just leading us out. That's not our horse, although we have had a horse called that in the past. You can see where the city is up into third. They are our main rivals here. So if Glingamil can lead us out quite well, I think Trader Vic might be able to get a good run at the finish post and really compete here with where the city. At the back, Classic Mike, Time of War, and then Exploits Kid just coming up the inside of Tiger Claw. It looks now like Trader Vic is leading out over two and a half furlongs left to run. Passes Glingamil on the inside. Wither City's going to make a move round the outside on this turn. And two furlongs left to go as we hit this straight. Who's going to want this race more? It looks like Trader Vic is really going to go for it now. Wither City not allowing that gap to be increased. It does look like Trader Vic is ex exceeding expectations here just down the straight. Cantering quite comfortably. With the city had a little go once or twice, the jockey trying to get that horse going, but it was not to be. Good little win there for Trader Vic. Nice to see. That's another grade three victory on the two-year-olds. And that's what I like to see. So in this video, we've seen Sweet Treats win an allowance race. We saw Wild Retriever go up to a grade two again and win. So very nice to see that over a mile. So a mile, mile one will be Wild Retriever's distance where hopefully we can get grade one wins. And that does open up Dubai and a few other places where sprinters really can compete against the best in the world. So I'm happy that we've got a horse there that looks like it could be around that distance this season. So that could be quite interesting. And we've had Trader Vic and Green Peaches both win grade three races as a two-year-old 
and that's the first step to greatness really that's what i want to see so we'll continue to test these horses i'll try and book races for peach pipe cresting queen and the rest of these two-year-olds especially dangerous minds when we get up to the one mile or seven furlong marker to try and make sure that they're running on distance so early days but promising we're 15 wins out of 18 races with half a million prize fund already this season we're running well we've got some promising youngsters that could do some real damage and i'm very confident that we have one maybe as many as four candidates for triple crown races i think one might actually be able to take the entire triple crown so we'll have a look at that as we move closer towards that date of course I'm talking about my two-year-olds, not the three-year-olds. I'm not sure about Wild Retriever for Triple Crown. I think it'd be good at Preakness, decent in the Kentucky Derby, but no chance at the moment in the Belmont Peach Pipe. I mean, that's going to struggle with the Preakness just in terms of distance, more than likely. Oops, and Cresting Queen. A little bit more of a chance in terms of distance, maybe got a bit of distance adaptability, but i'm really not convinced that that's a triple crown winning horse so we've got some tests for our three-year-old just in case we want to go for that this season but next season's triple crown i think we've got some real good candidates and i'm very excited to see how they progress in their two-year-old season so thanks for watching do come back next time as we do continue our quest for glory if you have enjoyed please leave a like on the video subscribe if you haven't already to find more content this video is going up late today because i was ill this morning and um schedule is going to be a bit funky over the next week or so if i am going to miss a day like totally miss a day uploading that will be on twitter at chris army follow me over there for the latest news about the channel and the videos as well as just to get in contact with me and chat about the game or anything else feel free to add me um but yeah, like that that's where the news will go up if anything does does sort of fluctuate. I have got some stuff to deal with with doctors and lawyers coming up over the next three two to three weeks maybe. Um as well as an interview about my immigration to stay in America. So that's coming up at the end of this month. So I've got a lot to prepare with. So keep an eye on Twitter. I'll let you know more there. But thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.